Hi everyone, my name is Brian Mahoney. I graduated Salisbury in 2009. I am currently a band director at Mariner Middle School, which is where I'm sending you this video from. This is in Cape Henlopen School District. Uh, this will be my eighth year teaching. When I'm not working here at the middle school, I also do the marching band at Cape Henlopen High School uh, as their drill writer and assistant director. And then I've also been playing in my own musical group called The Stims up and down the coast for about the last 10 years. I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Leah Cole. I graduated from Salisbury University in December 2014 with music education and vocal performance. I actually was very lucky enough to get a long-term sub position right after I graduated in December, starting right in January. I was very lucky as an elementary music long-term sub and then that fell right into me um, applying for the middle school, the sister school of the school I was at, and I've been there ever since for four years now. Um, without SU's um, guidance and support and what they've taught, what they taught me, I don't think I would have been so lucky, lucky and qualified for that long-term position. So I'm very grateful for everything that SU taught me. So I am a music teacher. I teach general music and chorus at a middle school in Pocomoke. Um, so not very far from SU still, and I am on the journey of figuring out what I want to do for my masters, and I'm just really loving where I'm at in life and my position, and I'm still trying to find different ways to incorporate music more than just in my teaching and my personal life. So thank you SU for being such a great school and helping me get to where I am in this classroom and doing what I love. I'm Meredith Jones. I graduated from SU in 2015. Um, I was a voice major during my time at Salisbury University. I studied with uh, the Dr. John Wesley Wright. Um, I so enjoyed my time um, there in the music department and specifically uh, learning from him. Um, I then went on after graduating to start a music therapy program in um, from St. Mary of the Woods College in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, however, that was interrupted when I gave birth to my first son uh, almost two years ago. Uh, since then, I've just had another. I have a th another three-week-old son. Um, so right now, I'm, I'm doing the mom thing. I am a stay-at-home uh, slash work-from-home mom. I love my music degree because I am able to teach private voice and piano lessons uh, from my home. I've got a private studio of about 25 students um, and then I also am one of the private instructors at uh, AMP Studios, the Academy of Music Performance um, in downtown Salisbury. I teach uh, keys and voice there as well um, as well as um, being one of the instructors for uh, summer camps or music um, music theater programs that come up and stuff like that. Um, I am so thankful for my time at SU. Uh, my experience through college was a little different uh, since I got married so young, um, but uh, my professors were all super great and worked around any challenges that that presented. Um, my best advice to current students is that you can't expect your journey to look like anyone else's. So I hope that you enjoy your time at SU. I hope you learn a lot. I hope you open yourself up to all the changes that can come and just really, you know, rock your world and change your perception of who you even are. So enjoy your time. I'm a little jealous. I miss being there with all of you, but uh, I know you guys will all go on to do great, amazing things. Best of luck. Hey guys, how you doing? Nathan Anderson here, chiming in from Austin, Texas. I'm a Salisbury alumni of 2009. I was a music education major. I uh, had a great time in Salisbury, learned a lot about music, teaching, writing, composing, uh, playing, conducting, you name it. Uh, had just a lot about me as a person as well. So since then, I moved to Austin, Texas um, with a couple other alumni who are all still living in here. Um, and been doing a lot of different things, uh, kind of played music full time for a long time, end up having a kid. Now I have a four year old and um, reopening the Music Bus Rocks. So what the Music Bus Rocks is, is a mobile music school. 
me and Robert Slang and another fellow alumni uh, of the music department, we opened this crazy idea of a music school together in 2011. And then between 2011 and 2015, we were a delivery music school. We'd go to neighborhoods, school programs, events, uh, festivals, just th all sorts of things that we could get to. And we would teach music and play music. Uh, we had to close down for a couple different reasons, but here we are in 2018, I, and I'm taking it on to reopen the Music Bus Rocks. So it's pretty cool. Um, it's really empty right now. I'm sitting on the bus. I'll show you a little spin around of the camera. Usually it's full of instruments, and, and version 2.0 is going to have a new floor, new paint, computers, technology, all sorts of fun things. So stay tuned for what's to come. Um, I've been working really hard on building a method, a, a business plan. The whiteboard is full of future ideas and um, working to build a franchise. So hopefully a bus will be near you soon. But here it is. So it's empty, like I said. It's going to get a new flooring, new paint, new instruments. But here's where the drum set goes. Uh, there's a the sky ceiling mural. And then um, just a little evolution's coming, so stay tuned for what the outcome's going to be. The goal is to be open by January and rocking again, and then just keep growing the fleet. So I uh, really appreciate you asking me to be here. I remember being in your seats and listening to alumni talk about their lives after college. And it was always very inspiring, and it's kind of it's humbling for me to be able to talk ten year, almost ten years later, about my experience, at least a little bit of it. So, at the end of the day, keep grinding, keep practicing, keep learning, keep playing music for the rest of your life, keep spreading the word, keep uh, living your passion, figure out what you want to do, and just go for it. You know, don't be scared. Just just do do what your dreams are, and if you work really hard, you can accomplish what you want. So check us out, the Music Bus Rocks. Again, Nathan Anderson, it's great to see you all. I uh, wish I was there jamming, so take care. Hey everyone, my name is Stephanie Rush and I graduated SU in 2014 with my music education degree. And then I couldn't get enough, so I came back and graduated with my master's degree in curriculum and instruction in 2017. Um, while I was at SU in the music department, I studied trumpet with Mr. Lee Nyer, but I grew so much with all of the help from all the other faculty and staff in the department. Um, I started at SU with literally no music knowledge. Um, I had always thought that I wanted to be a nurse, which now that I've been teaching for five years seems like super crazy. I don't know why I ever thought that. Um, but when I first started out, I didn't even think that I would finish the program. That's how little I knew. Um, and theory was hard. <laughs> it's so hard. So if you're in theory right now, like, keep going. It's hard, but you can do it. Um, and the faculty, the staff, and even my student body, you know, the people in my classes were amazing and so supportive. And I'm positive that that's still the case today. Um, because the SU department is so small and close-knit that you feel like a family. And, you know, you wouldn't let your family fall behind or not be able to do something. And that's how I honestly felt at SU. Um, but anyway, I am currently a music teacher in Wicomico County. Um, this is my fifth year teaching. I spent four years in Dorchester County Public Schools. Um, and I just moved closer back to Wicomico because I live here. Um, and Wicomico is a great county to teach in, and so is Dorchester. They both are, are good here on the shore. Um, but Wicomico is so great because you have support from your supervisor, from your other colleagues, um, and you have so many opportunities to get your kiddos out into the community here and just like showcase your amazing teaching and your kids' amazing talent. And that's, that's what the program needs. That's what music in the schools needs is to be out and about and showing off your awesomeness. Um, but anyway, I wish you all luck at SU. Um, stay positive, stay happy. Um, and if you ever need somewhere to observe or student teach, my door is always open. Have a great year, guys. Hi, um, I'm Zach Caceres, and I studied with Dr. Tabor and Dr. Cumming back now, I guess, in 2007, 2008, 2009, a long time ago now. Um, I studied guitar, and um, I'm now a computer programmer. I used to live in New York, now I live in Taipei, Taiwan. And um, I credit a lot of the success that I've had as a programmer to the education that I received 
uh, as, uh, as a musician. Um, it probably seems like programming and music could not possibly be further apart, but they're really not. In fact, uh, there's, I, I think, a lot of evidence that learning music and studying music brings just general brain benefits and life benefits to uh, to other professions, uh, especially a profession like programming. Uh, in fact, as a programmer, you meet a lot of other programmers that are either amateur musicians, they studied music in university, they're, they were professional or semi-professional musicians that, you know, kind of became programmers later in life. Um, and uh, I think there's a good reason for this. First is that you learn as a musician the power of practice. Uh, programming is talked about a lot like music. You know, people talk about the child prodigy programmer, this person just has so much talent or whatever. And I guess maybe some of that might be true, but a lot of it boils down, you start to see, to putting in the time and having the, the, the discipline to just push up against that wall and better yourself as a, as a programmer, or as a musician, and to deepen yourself and deepen your understanding in that infinite well that is a field like music or, or programming, because there's always more to learn, right? Um, the other thing is that music is a total brain workout, right? You're working out your memory and you spend so much time memorizing, spotting, and understanding patterns. Right? It's just patterns, 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 understanding those patterns and getting those patterns where they're just second nature so that you can use them creatively. And in fact, programming is essentially the same. Um, if you think about music, you have these like 12 notes that just repeat up and down, right? And the certain forms that we inherit from, you know, the Western musical tradition. And we're just constantly on this big search for how to take those forms and take those notes and take these patterns and scales and chords and things and kind of tweak them and recombine them in ever more novel and more interesting and more creative ways. And in programming, you have a very simple set of commands that you can use and you're constantly in the search for ways to combine and expand, you know, the, the ways that you use those commands to make ever more creative and more novel and more interesting things. I mean, it's really the same thing. And, you know, since music is really this language, it's a language without words, it's an abstract language, uh, it's, it really has just tremendous parallels in the abstract language of, of code. Um, so while it may seem like these worlds are far apart, they're really not. And I'm very grateful uh, to, you know, Dr. Tabor and Dr. Cumming and everyone at SU for the musical education that I got, you know, earlier in my life. And uh, I truly believe that it's been very valuable, even as I've gone into software engineering later. And I would recommend it to anybody, even if you wanted to end up as a programmer. So thanks.